In this short video, we're going to take a brief look at these Spectrum Analyzer options in Agilent's FieldFox RF Analyzer. The Spectrum Analyzer covers 100 kHz to 6 GHz and is usable down to 5 kHz, so we can measure everything from VLF, HF, broadcast, land mobile radio, marine and air bands, all mobile phone bands, and Wi-Fi up to 5.8 GHz. Typical sensitivity is minus 148 dBm, and even more importantly, the dynamic range is an amazing 96 dB. The frequency stability is better than one part per million per year, and the built-in step attenuator can be set with 1 dB resolution. The RF input can also handle up to 50 volts of DC, a lifesaver when testing satellite downlinks that have DC power on the center pin of the coax. It conforms to the relevant mill standards, and incredibly, the FieldFox meets all its specifications over an operating temperature range from minus 10 degrees C to plus 55 degrees C, ideal when working in freezing cold or extremely hot environments. Best of all, it weighs only 2.8 kilograms, including the battery. Let's start by measuring signals from this cheap whip antenna I have here. I've set the start frequency to 88 megahertz and the stop frequency to 108 megahertz. So we've tuned in to the FM broadcast band. And here you can see all of the FM broadcast stations in our locality here. If I press the measure button and then select tune and listen and FM wide, we can now select the tune frequency currently set to 94.5 megahertz and as you can hear we can now demodulate the transmission the demod types available include fm wide fm narrow for land mobile radio and am for broadcast am and the airband the analyzer does a new sweep and then pauses for the listen time currently set to two and a half seconds and uh, during that listen time we can listen to the demodulated audio. The analyzer then re-sweeps to refresh the trace and then demodulates again. And here you can see I've turned on all six markers and if I press the more button we can now turn on the marker table which shows the frequency and amplitude levels of all six markers simultaneously. And we can now, of course, capture that screen and save it as a JPEG file, either to the internal memory, to a USB memory stick, or the mini SD card. And again, as with all Agilent Spectrum Analyzers, uh, it's also got a built-in frequency counter, so we can accurately measure the transmit frequency of any of these carriers with one hertz resolution. And if I press the marker function button, we can also turn on the noise marker, where we can measure carriage to noise ratio, normalized to a one hertz bandwidth. And we've even got the band or interval marker for measuring the modulation or band power of a given transmission. If I press the trace button, you can see that trace one is here in yellow, performing a clear write operation. If I select trace two, currently set to blank, but set it now to max hold, you'll see in the blue or white trace, it's storing the maximum value of the signal. And we've got two more traces. Let's turn on trace three and set that to min hold. You'll also see there's a record and playback setup button. Here I can create a new recording session and tell the instrument to record a history of the traces, either to the internal memory or to a USB stick or the mini SD card. And here's a marker function I especially like. If we're aligning a directional antenna, such as a Yagi or a satellite dish, we can turn on audio beep. And the audio beep, the pitch and rate of the beep, corresponds to the amplitude of the perceived signal. This makes aligning or peaking an antenna incredibly simple. You don't have to watch the screen of the spectrum analyzer as you're making the adjustments. If you're using a radio standard such as CDMA or GSM or WiMAX, we can select the radio standard from the built-in list here. Uh, here I've selected WCDMA 850, and you can see on the screen that the frequency is now measured in channel number rather than megahertz. This makes it very simple to change channel quickly in the radio standard that you're operating in without having to know the exact frequency of each channel. 
A key specification of all spectrum analyzers is their sensitivity or ability to detect weak signals. Here you can see with the attenuation set to zero, the preamplifier turned on and the input terminated with a 50 ohm load that at about 2.4 gigahertz, we're seeing a noise floor of around minus 148 dBm. One unique feature of the FieldFox is its independent source. Even though we're currently using the spectrum analyzer as a normal spec N with, in this case, an antenna monitoring uh, some frequencies coming off air, the signal generator within the FieldFox can be used totally independently. In this case, we have it turned on, it's being used as a CW source, and the frequency can be set completely independently from whatever frequency that the spectrum analyzer is set to. So we can use it as a source to perhaps test interference on a receiver, or even use it as a mobile beacon. The FieldFox will automatically measure channel power of modulated transmissions, such as this spread spectrum WCGMA signal. We can also measure the occupied bandwidth of the signal. Here you can see the occupied bandwidth is 4.2 MHz, and the power is minus 11 dBm. We can even measure the adjacent channel power and if we're working to a radio standard, such as, in this case, WCDMA, we can recall that standard and the adjacent channel power measurement will automatically configure itself to measure adjacent channel power properly for that radio standard. And you can even import your own radio standards. You just create them on your PC and then load them in on a USB memory stick. The interference analyzer option greatly simplifies the task of capturing intermittent signals. The lower half of the display shows the normal spectrum analyzer trace, as we've seen previously. But the upper half of the display now shows a spectrogram. The x-axis still displays frequency, but the y-axis now displays time. Each new sweep of the spectrum analyzer trace is added to the stack of other traces and the amplitude of the signal is indicated by the color. So red is a strong signal and blue is a weak signal. Here you can see we have two strong spread spectrum signals that are present the entire time. And here you can see a series of narrowband signals, fairly weak, and over on the left you can see another broad modulated signal that is quite intermittent. And best of all, every captured trace can be logged and recorded into either the FieldFox's internal memory or onto a USB memory stick or the mini SD card. And as well as storing the frequency and amplitude data, it also stores the date and the time. And if we have a GPS receiver plugged in, it will even store the lat and long position of where that trace was captured. And if you prefer, we can display it as a waterfall display. Thank you for watching this short video. For further information on the Agilent Field Fox, please visit the website shown below or contact your local representative.